Hello there, Sagittarius. Welcome to my channel. Victoria here at Radiant Moon Tarot. This is your March 2023 love reading. If you are currently in a romantic relationship of some kind, or if it comes up a temporary separation from your person, then this is the reading for you. If you are single and looking for new love, I will have separate readings posted just for you guys. So let's get right into it. Um, if you do find that you enjoy this reading, by the way, please take a moment and support my channel. Free for you. All you need to do is just hit that like button and hit the subscribe button as well. Uh, feel free to leave a comment. Uh, it helps the video get seen. I break the algorithm a little bit. March, we have a lot of very powerful energies going on. Um, it's especially at the beginning of the month, we've got a full moon in Virgo and you might be very much in assessment mode um, at that time. Okay. You, if there's anything that's been, you know, kind of underlying issues that haven't been addressed, uh, those might come out into the open. You might be assessing what you want out of your relationship. Okay. Um, and also your personal values, right? So some of you might be deciding to, uh, you know, take something to the next level or maybe, Hey, if it comes up, break something off that could be come up for you as well if you're not being if your needs aren't being met okay or if you know you find that you're not being valued like you should be in a relationship so you might be very much um, in that very decisive kind of energy. We've got Venus and Aries all the way up until the 18th. And Venus, you know, love, abundance, fertility, growth, expansion, all of that stuff um, with the Venus energy. But with Mars, <laughs> can be a little bit passionate. Okay, so some of you, this can really benefit you in this energy. You can have a lot of passion, a lot of growth. The Aries energy takes you, helps to take you to the next level, right? Gives you that extra energy boost. But Aries, um, Venus and Aries can also be a little bit fiery. All right, um, you know, emotions can run wild kind of thing. And so if, especially if there's been something festering beneath the surface. So just be aware of that energy. Okay, we are entering a brand new astrological new year um, with the new moon in Aries on the 20th and of course Aries season on the 21st. So it's a great time for you to set your intentions, set your goals and project and see what you want to, where you want to go in your relationship in the year ahead. So we have no rain today. All right. So you are being very encouraged to look at the bright side of things. Okay. To get things out in the open, to clear the air, speak your truth. Okay. And ultimately focus on what is, focus on the blessings in your relationship. Focus on what is going well. Okay. Um, this is really encouraging you not to dwell on the little things. Okay, sometimes, you know, some, what are the important things out of a relationship, right? Love, respect, honesty, truth, faithfulness, all of those things, right? And, you know, sometimes, you know, the fact that someone chews too loud or the fact that someone leaves the towel on the floor, those might be little minor uh, annoyances, but in the big scheme of things, are they really super duper important in a relationship for some people they are um but for others it's just really that reminder there to take a step back and look at all the positives um now if the positives of course do not outweigh the negatives then there's that assessment energy all right so no rain today can certainly represent um focusing on the blessings focusing on what is going well focusing on solutions, okay, clearing the air, forgiveness, healing comes in there with that as well. All right, but this also shows that there are sunnier times ahead. A lot of people have been going through a lot of challenges lately. We have Butterfly Garden coming in here. There's change, there's growth ahead for you. Spring has sprung, right? We're right on the cusp there of spring. So, you know, this is, you know, for some of you, your um, relationship is evolving in the most wonderful ways. Okay, the Butterfly Garden also sorts of change and transformation, bringing in a lot of beauty, a lot of light, okay, um, hopefully a higher level of commitment or hopefully just that, um, you know, wonderful go with the flow kind of energy in your relationship. But the butterfly garden can also represent that a person may have been going through some changes, okay? And, you know, this can be like you might not be the same person, right? We do evolve as we go along and you might not be the same person that you were six months ago, a year ago, five years ago. And, you know, because you've grown, because you've evolved, right, you might be thinking, right, is this relationship still good for me, right? We do come across um, those periods in our lives, right? And this is such a powerful 
um, astrological energies that are going on in March, that this can be a very big turning point for a lot of people. So the butterfly garden also does um, really open you up to growth, to doing something different, um, to enter the next stage of a relationship, right? Something that may have been challenging, may have been difficult right now. It's, um, you know, time where things just kind of get a little bit better. All right. We also have touch the sky energy here as well. Some of you might actually be feeling a little bit alone. Um, some of you might actually be retreating unto yourself a little bit there to just think about things, um, you know, think about what's important for you, right? It is a kind of a solitary energy. It's got a little bit of a dreamy quality to it, okay? And, you know, but it can be an, an encouragement there to reach out to your person, okay? Um, especially if you are feeling a little bit disconnected, right? A little bit alone, they're in that energy. Sometimes we need to talk about things. Sometimes we need to clear the air, just like the no rain today, right? So, you know, clear the air, get things out in the open. But yeah, some of you might be in that contemplative mode, but some of you do need to do something a little bit different, butterfly garden, um, to rekindle the spark, right? And we do, um, we do focus on money and career and all of that stuff. We've got a lot of distractions in the world. So this could be a time where you make a conscious effort to be a little bit more together with your person. We have let go of control issues, allow the situation to unfold naturally. Okay. Quite often when we push the envelope, we sometimes push someone away or push something away. All right. So it's important there to take that step back and to allow things to happen as they're naturally meant to happen, right? The natural course of events. Okay. Um, cause yeah, if we try and micromanage people or the universe, right, we create resistance and we don't want to do that. Okay. Um, we can put our intentions out there. We can speak our truth. We can state our case and say what we want. Okay. But then we do need to allow, we've got passion, beautiful, allow your heart and soul to sing with joy. Okay. Yep. This is certainly a month with Venus and Aries where passions run wild. All right. And, uh, you know, this can be for the really good, really exciting, really wonderful, maybe having some fun, having some adventure, um, but passion and passionate energy can of course also be a little spicy. So just to, um, just to be aware of that energy, but so the, perhaps you're breathing fresh passion and life into your relationship and wouldn't that be nice, right? We've got deception coming here as well. Someone is wearing a false self mask in this relationship. Now this doesn't necessarily, um, you know, it's not necessarily a sign that there's like someone living a double life or something. Okay. It's really more of there is something behind um, something hidden. Okay. Or something that has been buried that hasn't been talked about. Someone may have some hidden fears and anxieties, right? Someone might have some hidden desires, um, hidden dreams, right? There might be some minor annoyances that have been kind of swept under the rug a little bit. Okay. And someone's just not talking about it. So deception can be harmful, but it can also be kind of innocent as well in a little bit of ways. And sometimes we don't always express things out in the open because we have a fear of hurting another person, or maybe we're a little bit afraid of being vulnerable. Um, you know, and especially if you're getting to know your person, right, you might, you might not want them to think less of you if you really do come up with your fears or something. So there's something hidden, here that is around you in the month ahead. And of course, this can just be you take keeping something to yourself, but it is worth exploring. Okay. It is worth looking a little bit deeper, look beneath the surface. And we have true love coming here as well. This is the romance of a lifetime. So passion and love do come in there. And hey, maybe that deception energy can be somebody who has just not revealed their true feelings um, and those feelings of love, right? And uh, so if you're at the stage of your relationship where you haven't quite said the I love you's yet or you haven't really talked about your hopes and your fears, there's that deception energy coming in there. Okay, and like I said, it doesn't necessarily have to be negative. It's just something that um, has not been revealed. Okay, it, and again, it's not necessarily anything sinister. Although if you're seeing red flags, pay attention to those, right? Your intuition will certainly guide you. 
So we have the Empress card right in the heart of your reading. Beautiful. There you go. Venus, love, abundance, success, um, fertility, growth, expansion, all of this wonderful energy right here, heart and center. You've got love on the mind. Some of you are talking about starting a family or adding to your family. Um, you know, maybe there's some fears around that. Okay. Or maybe there's some hidden desires around that as well. The Empress card, of course, represents love as well. So this can certainly be this energy where there is love on the table. It's blossoming, it's growing, it's beautiful. Um, but of course that deception energy, maybe someone just hasn't quite said it yet. Okay. Or someone hasn't quite it truly expressed the depths of their emotions at this particular time. Okay. But that Venus energy is beautiful. Love is in the air. It's all around you. We've got the strength card crossing. There's some fears. There's some worries there um, with that uh, with that energy. So um, that is very interesting, right? When the card is crossing, it's just representing a little bit of a challenge or something that you need to address and deal with before moving forward. Okay. And the strength card brings in some Leo energy. It brings in um, you know, some courage. Um, so it could be that instead of courage, someone's a little bit afraid where someone needs to tap into their inner strength, <clears throat> excuse me, and inner courage to get something out of the open or to say what they want, okay, or to express their emotions, right? Whatever that looks like, okay, the strength card can also be maybe a little bit of doubts that are um, that are around as well. So something where we do need to open up, we do need to be um, a little bit vulnerable perhaps, okay? And we need to really embrace our inner strength there with that card, okay? To move forward, to address things, to um, maybe release things for some of you, okay? And to really um, continue on your journey. So a little bit of a challenge there, but not insurmountable. We've got the Hierophant, the Sun. Wow, this is some big energy for you guys. The Judgment card, geez Louise, and the Eight of Swords. Wow, okay. You guys, huh, other than the Eight of Swords, every single card that I've pulled for you is a major arcana. This is massive, massive, massive energy for you. So we'll go through that. Ten of Swords, Queen of Swords. <clears throat> Three of Wands and the Moon card. So this is some great energy justice at the bottom of the deck. Wow, the heavy hitters just keep on coming, right? Justice, important decisions to be made, right? But when we make the decisions with the justice card, we look at all the sides, right? We make a balanced, fair decision in whatever we need to do. Um, the justice card can represent speaking truthfully and honestly right out in the open. It can certainly represent some good karma coming your way here, but there might be something here to do with a legal situation or a contract. The justice card does bring out that and does bring out legalities. So it may be that maybe someone is, because um, we do have the Hierophant, coming out there, which is the marriage card, uh, the Empress card, which is, of course, new beginnings, okay, and also fertility, right, so pregnancy card um, quite often. So some of you may have may be um, talking about or thinking about um, marriage, higher level of commitment, starting a family, um, even having a fresh start in your relationship because there is the judgment card here, okay, um, there is maybe some healing that is coming in here as well. Um, and it may be that if you are in temporary separation with your person, or if you've been going through a rough patch, um, then the, there's forgiveness that needs to happen, right? We do need to address things, get them out in the open, be honest and truthful so that we can clear the air and have that fresh start. Okay. So some of you might be going through that as well. All right. And you're trying to figure out what, to, what, what to do, what to say, what the potential is, um, in that situation. Okay. But the justice card, yes, can also possibly represent a, um, uh, a decision, um, in your favor, balanced, fair decision. So if some of you have been waiting for, um, a final release, from say a previous relationship, right? Custody battles, alimonies, uh, divorce papers, all of those kind of things. It's amazing how many people um, 
are married and then they get separated from their person and they separated for years and they actually don't go through necessarily with filing the divorce papers. Um, uh, it's amazing how many people do that and then all of a sudden they find themselves in a new relationship, okay, and now they're like, oh yeah, I'm, I still have to tie up some loose ends, okay, so some of you might be waiting for that for just so that you can be free to move forward with your current relationship. Um, it's not, um, not that uncommon. All right, so you could have some good news on the way in regards to that, into tying up those loose ends. All right, but the Justice card, yes, can represent that higher level of commitment, something that is legally binding. Okay, um, but we do have the sun, and the sun is in your underlying feelings, okay? Now, the sun brings energy, brings a burst of inspiration and optimism, so just like the no rain today, okay, we're not going to focus on the negatives, okay? We're going to focus on the blessings. We're going to focus on what we want. We're going to try and keep a positive mindset and attitude, and the sun brings that out in you as well. The sun represents youth and vitality, okay, and considering we do have the Empress card there, there as well. There could certainly be something to do with children um, in your realm. Okay. If you're wanting, if you're maybe blending families together, that can cause a little bit of um, fear. Okay. Uh, again, uh, let go of control issues, allow that to happen, right? Um, children are fickle sometimes. And, you know, if you push them a little bit too much, especially with something really important um, as blending families together, uh, you'll be, but you will probably be met with a lot of resistance, right? And so just allow it. Don't set expectations. Don't, you know, don't push the envelope a little bit too much and things shall unfold, um, you know, exactly how they're meant to. So, um, you know, because that way you're not forcing someone into something necessarily. All right, but the sun can also certainly give you an energy boost, okay? The energy boost that we need, the sun is shining, spring is in the air, okay? We're coming out of the darkness of winter, and there is some massive changes and that are ahead for a lot of people. Astrological New Year, so I think here you're feeling fairly optimistic about whatever you've got going on in your world. The Judgment card, okay, big release and letting go, okay? We're letting go of fears, worries, doubts, we're letting go go of any kind of baggage because we don't want to bring it forward okay the judgment card brings about an energy of release forgiveness okay um tying up those loose strings okay so that you can be free to move forward on the next stage of your journey but the judgment card also brings second chances okay so again some of you may really be um you know, contemplating and working on a second chance with a relationship or repairing a relationship that has had the bonds broken a little bit. And, uh, you know, sometimes, you know, sometimes breakups are permanent, but sometimes it's like there's something there. There's a glue there. Okay. And especially with that Empress, Empress card, right, is there's love there. Um, there is that connection. And uh, so sometimes we have those day to day things, um, you know, those habits, patterns, behaviors that, you know, drive us absolutely up the wall. And uh, sometimes people have commitment issues as well, right? So there may still be some bonds that really tie you to your person if you are in that situation. And you have a potential here to fix that and to heal that and to have a second chance, a second lease on your relationship there. But the judgment card also brings ultimate clarity. It brings growth as well. We prepare to go into our next astrological new year and it's important to cleanse, right? To be honest and truthful, to get things out of the open, um, you know, to, uh, you know, speak our truths, right? Reveal our fears and our worries and our doubts and our desires, right? As we go along, as we go forward, so that we can make the good choices. And so something here where you are maybe wiping the slate clean, okay? Or you are having some very important discussions and making some very important decisions. And the Hierophant here, um, this is your crowning position. So your goals, thoughts, possibilities, and the Hierophant card is one of higher level learning for one, for ascension 
um, for learning about you, learning about your person, maybe, um, you know, experiencing this growth in a relationship. Maybe there's some things that you've learned about yourself. This is one of higher level commitment as well. So it can be marriage. Okay. It can be a marriage card. Um, some of you are break want to break free of tradition because it is very tradition um, oriented energy, right? Usually it's very um, religious, right? You, the traditional imagery is the Pope. Okay. And, um, you know, so as far as marriage commitment relationships go, some of you are, you know, you know, what's important to you and what you believe in. And some of you are looking for something traditional. Um, you know, the, First we, you know, first we first we date, then we fall in love, then we get engaged, then we get married, then we have a family, right? Everything has a certain order that we do things. Um, other people there that doesn't work for you, okay? So it just like um, just like our happy little surfer dude in uh, in this particular deck here, you might be looking to do something your way, okay? Something that is uniquely you. So instead of maybe that official documentation with the marriage papers, perhaps you. You want to live together with somebody first or you know maybe you don't have that traditional um kind of first we do this then we do this then we do this you're shaking things up a little bit and maybe even um you know breaking the status quo there a little bit okay but that hierophant is one of keeping the faith of believing in yourself in your relationship okay and we're keeping that hope and optimism alive. So it's a really positive um, kind of energy moving you forward, okay? Um, we do have the Eight of Swords here, okay? So there's something got you wrapped up in knots a little bit. The Eight of Swords is quite often overthinking, overanalyzing. It's where our anxieties, our fears play out, but this is a minor inconvenience here with this particular eight of swords considering all of the other major arcana that's coming out this is the baby and uh this is like this this little fleeting kind of moment right i'm feeling stuck i'm feeling trapped i'm not sure where to go i'm all wrapped up and i'm overthinking things and i'm feeling this resistance but all of this here is really um manifesting in to help you release resistance to listen to your intuition to tell yourself a little bit more of a positive story okay so i think here that you know if you are undecided about something okay or if you are worried about something we got all of this other energy coming in to clear the air okay out with the old and in with the new we've got the ten of swords coming in now the ten of swords is typically this is you your attitude and also advice Okay, and when we have the Ten of Swords, sometimes we have to make difficult decisions in our life, but sometimes we have to make a conscious effort to leave negativity behind and look to the future, to look into the horizon. This person there, the birds, uh, the crows in this deck represent thoughts, right? And you see in this one, the Eight of Swords, okay, all these crows, they're like tying her up in, knot, in knots, right? But ultimately, she's actually free. All right. So with this particular one, right, we're freeing ourselves. All right. So this is a time to let go of the past, let bygones be bygones, clear the air, release any negativity. Okay. And look towards the sunrise, right? She is free. She is not tied up. She's made a good decision for herself and she's moving forward in the more positive direction with a more positive mindset. All right. So again, there might be something that you need to get clarity on. There might be a decision that has been weighing you down on some level, whether it's a decision that you make or whether you're waiting for something to come in that justice card there there is a sense of freedom of release and of relief coming in there with that particular energy right so time to free yourself up okay and turn over the page and things are getting better there we have the Queen of Swords as external influences. Now, when we've got the Queen of Swords, it certainly can represent some communication. Queen of Swords is also really good at releasing energy, using that sword to cut things off. Okay, so there could be some sort of information that is coming in for you in the month ahead, an important conversation that can help you, um, help release you and set you free from something. The Queen of Swords as the energy all around you though, can also be you speaking your truth, being honest, thinking logically, thinking clearly, 
looking to the future, by the way, okay? And, you know, maybe speaking your truth and setting some personal boundaries as well can be very important in this energy. This is one, the Queen of Swords um, is an energy of being open and receptive, but also with a little bit of caution, okay, in that. So um, you might not necessarily in something be wearing your um, heart on your sleeve, but you're open to communication and to resolving things and, um, you know, to uh, figuring out, you know, what issues you may have. All right. But the Queen of Swords can also be somebody in your world that may help you in some way. This can be someone who can give you some really good advice, okay, or a little bit of clarity in something here, okay. So communication all around you. All right, can certainly be the key that opens some doors, whether it's incoming communication or external communication of some kind. All right, so we've got the strength card coming out again in that. It flipped over for you. We've got the ace of swords. There's your clarity, your truth. Thank you. And the nine of pentacles. Okay, so the nine of pentacles is an energy of success and abundance. Okay, it's also a completion. Okay, so some of you do have a successful uh, a successful resolution to something. The strength card, you've been patient, you've been waiting for a while. Okay, uh, the ace of swords here. We It's a new beginning, a fresh start. This is the hand of fate of destiny coming in with the sword, victory and success. Okay, so some new information may come in here. And the nine of pentacles is an energy of independence, success, Okay, so if you are waiting for some sort of judgment or something to come in there, this is a victory for you, okay? This is that good news that you've been waiting for. And with the Nine of Pentacles, it sets you free, okay? So uh, do set, feel that um, energy that's coming in. It's like, yes, I'm free now because the Eight of Swords, I'm stuck, right? I'm stuck, I'm trapped, and now I'm free. So this could be something external going on, but the eight, um, the eight of strength, the uh, strength card there, um, with the um, um, with the ace of swords. Again, you might be kind of like tapping into your inner strength there to speak about your truth, um, to be honest about something. Also, your fears. Now, because the nine of pentacles is a very great energy, um, you know, success and abundance, but it's one of independence. And if you are speaking your truth, okay, and if you're getting something out in the open, you might actually have a fear of losing yourself. All right. And, you know, it's like as we move through life, especially if you've been burned in relationships before, um, we quite often do reflect a little bit and we know who we are, we know what we want, okay, and we know where we've been. And if you've lost yourself in a relationship before, if you felt that you've made way too many sacrifices while someone else just lived their best life, okay, at your expense. The Nine of Pentacles can certainly represent needing to hold on to your sense of independence and a, a really um, a really balanced relationship, Justice card, Balance and Harmony too, by the way, um, a really balanced relationship will have all the elements of togetherness, of planning for the future, but also a little bit of freedom for independence there as well and you know your person may have their interests and hobbies and maybe some things that they do that don't necessarily have to involve you and then you can have yours as well and that is a part of a healthy relationship we don't have to do things with our person 24 hours a day and actually maintaining a little bit of sense of self is a good thing okay so you might be expressing something there about those kind of fears or wants right it's like I'm you know, I'm willing to move forward in this relationship, but I don't want to lose myself, right? I don't want a codependent thing, okay? And I want that there. But I do think here that there might be some sort of resolution in regards to money as well. And a lot of people are having some money discussions and issues around here. So there could be something really good there that comes in, okay? So some positive communication though, and, you know, also um, a little bit of compassion, I think, there as well. With that strength card so we do have the strength card coming out twice so it could be that there's something in regards to leo energy now you or your person may have leo in their chart in your charts somewhere okay in your astrology charts um a person around you that delivers some sort of information some news or someone that gives you some advice may also be a leo person or a leo may have a heavy placement in their chart but 
There may also be something here that is manifesting in your world where you set some intentions right around Leo season back, um, back in the summer. All right. And we are very much at the end of that, um, energy, right? So, you know, something could be playing out for you just the way you wanted it. All right. So keep an open mind and the three of wands is just that. Okay. Um, you're hoping your plans work out. You're setting the stage, setting the intentions for the future. You're making some plans and you're ready to move forward. The three of wands is an incredibly hopeful, positive card. Okay. And this is where we release our blocks and resistance. We release ourselves from, you know, any kind of fears or worries and we're just ready to move forward. So, um, I feel like here that you are, you know, certainly preparing yourself for the next stage of your journey. Now, the three of wands can also represent an element of fun, just like the sun card. Okay. Um, a little bit of fiery energy, a little bit of passionate energy there. So perhaps there is, um, you know, something here where you're hoping to have a little bit more fun or to have some adventure, um, in your relationship in some way. Okay. Because that three of wands can be, um, a travel card. It can be one where you're preparing to move forward. Okay. But it's also one where we do have a little bit of growth. We've got some passion that comes in there. So, um, maybe some of you are looking to, um, you know, maybe have a little bit more fun and adventure in your relationship, but your overall outcome, we do have the moon card coming in. So this is Pisces energy. Um, but the moon card can bring, um, some very emotional energy to the surface. Okay. So the moon cycles might be very important for you in the month of March, full moon, release, let go healing, bring things to the surface, the new moon, setting new intentions, cleaning, wiping the slate clean, looking out into the future. Okay. Future plans. So the moon cycle is very important for you, but the moon card is also where we face our fears, right? Anything that has been lying beneath the surface comes to light. We gain clarity, we gain insights, but the moon card encourages you to feel your fear and then move forward. Do it anyway, right? And we do have two strength cards coming out there, giving you, um, you know, giving you a little bit of a confidence boost, Okay, so the moon also does represent some manifestation cycles. So you could have something again um, that is manifesting in your world, something that you want, something that you desire. But the moon card can also bring out the dreamy energy, okay, focused on your dreams. It brings out some romance and, you know, hopefully some positive feelings for you there. The moon also brings mysteries and surprises. So I think for some of you here, this is whenever I get a little bit of a mysterious card, usually the moon card or um, the high priestess, whenever I get them as an overall outcome, it's like a little bit of mystery at play. Okay, because I think it's really more of spirit not wanting to pigeonhole people because it's really one of those things where if you're dreaming about it, if you're imagining it, you can create it. All right. And that's a little bit different for each and every one of you. So there's a little bit of mystery that does come in with that moon card. Well, something a little bit hidden. Okay. Something that may be a little bit of a surprise. Well, let's get a couple more cards for that and see what we've got. We've got the Hierophant for the second time. Now that is significant. We've got the five of wands and we'll get one more. And we have the temperance card coming out there. So we've got your energy. Okay, there, Sag. We've got your energy. So what are your dreams? What are your goals? What do you want? Okay, you have the ability here to commit, to move forward, to resolve issues, to heal situations, to restore balance and harmony may require a little bit of patience. Okay. But ultimately here, keep the faith alive, right? The temperance card does bring in an energy of moderation, of balance, and also one of spiritual connection. And the Hierophant card is also a spiritual um, energy here as well. So it can be that you're um, your relationship has the potential there to ascend to the next level. Um, you have the ability here to really connect with your person on a different level, okay, um, on a more spiritual level than anything else, all right? But you also have the ability here to um, resolve any differences with the Five of Wands, 
peace, any conflicts can be resolved. Um, any drama can, you know, be healed in this energy, right? We're always faced with battles and challenges along our journey. And ultimately, you can get things done. Okay, and you can resolve things in a way that is healthy and the way that you want. All right, but that temperance card there is beautiful. Okay, that is your energy. So believe in yourself, believe in your relationship, whatever you are dreaming about manifesting in your world, you have the potential to see that happen. Patience may be a virtue though. Okay, just uh, just saying, okay, we do need to be a little bit patient sometimes. So let's get you a couple of last messages out here. Last messages, please. Thank you. <clears throat> we have be supportive make a genuine effort to show you care okay sometimes we're going through a little bit of a challenge but your person can be going through a bit of a challenge as well and again a balanced relationship you lift each other up when you're down and uh, you support each other through the challenging times we have love who you are there's your nine of pentacles energy you are, you are divine, delightful, and deserving of the wonderful things life has to offer. Yes, 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 okay? Now that's really where you're assessing your values, especially towards the beginning of the month, that full moon in Virgo, okay? Um, but this is also really, um, I'm feeling it's very tied to this Nine of Pentacles energy. Don't lose yourself in a relationship, okay? Believe in yourself. Be confident in yourself, all right, and be true to who you are, okay? We do have compromises and things that we do need to embrace in relationships, but you shouldn't be the one giving up your identity, okay? We have speak the language of love. Loving words have the power to change lives, including your own, yes, okay? When we are kind and compassionate, strength card, to our person, even if we are being brave and getting things out in the open or discussing our issues, okay? When we speak with kindness and compassion, people are more receptive to what we have to say, okay? Rather than coming out, you know, with, um, you know, fire in our, um, in our belly, right? And coming out with argumentative things where people do tend to shut off when we do that. But when we're calm, when we're kind, right? People tend to be a little bit more receptive, but there is love in the air and speak that language of love. And I'll leave that there for you guys. I hope there was something here that resonated with you. If so, please don't forget to hit like on this video and subscribe to my channel. I hope you have a fantastic month ahead. I thank you for watching and I will see you guys later. Bye.